All right, now we're live. Restart. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Woo, woo. So glad to have this family, faithful family on top of that. Uh, just a big round of applause to all those that helped out yesterday. Awesome, awesome job. Uh, make an impact in this community, and that's, that's what we're here to do. And, uh, our heart is truly felt through that. So once again, thank you for all that has given and your time, talents, materials, uh, we're blessing others. Amen. And that's the best part of this season is, is giving back to others. So uh, let's not forget about that. Let's stand together. We're going to pray over the service. <clears throat> Lord, we just thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for allowing your spirit to be here, to be with us, Father. Lord, I pray that you would continue to watch over us, protect us. Lord, let your love be shown in this community through us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. Multiplied month, so it's very important that we get those check-ins so that we can give a little extra this time. 
Um, thanks to everyone who came out and helped yesterday with um, with Christmas with uh, Christmas with Hope. Uh, it was a fantastic event, and we served so many new families uh, in this area that we didn't know before. Um, I personally, and I know so many of us, got an opportunity to make some connections, and um, it, it did my heart good. Uh, serving in that way blesses me probably more than it blesses the people that we are trying to bless. So um, I'm glad that we got to share that opportunity. Thank you so much for giving and for serving and stepping out of what's usual, and it was a awesome opportunity. Um, we are going to have a Christmas Eve service at 6 or 6.30 p.m. Um, come hear the Christmas story and sing some Christmas carols with our church family. Um, we hope you find the service relevant today. Worship with us. Thank you, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Let's stand together. Joy to the world. Amen. The Lord has come.
Yeah, children, you are going to see Miss Leah. like to pray for a different ministry in the area and uh, what we would like to do is let's pray for all the ministries and the efforts they are putting together uh, to reach people at this time of the year especially showing God's love towards them and uh, any way as an individual however you can show that love uh, do that as well and um, so let's go ahead and pray. We always like to pray for our church family as well and uh, the needs that are being represented here. And, um, and so let's pray that God will just uh, watch over us, those who are watching online. We want to remember them in prayer as well. And uh, we know that sooner or later that they're going to be back uh, with the church family and being a part of us. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your goodness and for your mercies towards us. We thank you for so loving us that you gave your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life where your body was broken and your blood was shed because you so loved us. Thank you for giving your life so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. And we pray now, O oh God, that we would share that joy that we have with others so that they too can come to know this Jesus Christ. Give us grace, give us patience, give us all that we need that we may continue to live this life and let our light shine so that others will see Christ in us. Thank you for our church family today. Those who are here, those who are watching online, I pray, oh God, that you would continue to touch hearts and lives. You know the families and, and friends with different needs, and we speak favor on their behalf today, whatever those needs might be. We thank you and we praise you for what you're going to do. We would pass it on and his family, or they're taking a few days off, watch over them. Uh, lead and guide them and protect their lives. We pray, we thank you, and we praise you for all that you have done. And Lord, I thank you for watch over Guy this week because of the accident that he was in. Thank you for him being here today, his family. And we give you praise and thanks that your protection was right there with him and those involved. I pray that you would watch over the many churches and their efforts today in trying to reach people by uh, trying to invite them to church, by giving them gifts. However they want to reach out, I pray, O oh God, that many lives will be touched. Love will be shown, that there will be joy. We thank you and we praise you. Be with our tithes and our offering as we will be sharing that online in the mail in the box at the back of the church we thank you and we praise you continue to bless us and to multiply what we have watch over us now as we look into your word may your holy spirit be our guide and our teacher and we shall give you all the praise and all the thanks in jesus name we pray amen, amen. well like I said, uh, uh, Pastor Don and um, his family are taking a well-deserved uh, uh, few days off. And uh, so you are stuck with me today. <laughs> oh, by the way, last week, church finished like at least 10 minutes earlier. So I'm going to add that 10 minutes <laughs> to my time today. Uh, um, but anyway... Fasten your seatbelts. Maybe I should have Andy do this part for me. Fasten your seatbelts. Make sure your table and chair are in an upright and locked position and ready for this time of blessing that we're going to be together. Um, by the way, Bill was also a pilot. And, uh, and, uh, so, but good to, good to be here. 
Um, today we'll be focusing on joy and uh, during the Advent season and uh, the last couple of weeks, Pastor Don talked about, uh, look, at, look at those kids. Well, the first one looked like joy, maybe not, but, uh, but you could see maybe the, that's a, a joy because of happiness maybe or because of all the toys they have received. <laughs> um, my neighbor across the street, by the way, uh, Ken, and uh, they have a nice uh, big yard sign in, in front there says joy, and uh, I, I see that every night as they put on the lights. But it's easier to have joy when things are going well. But when things are not going so well, what, what happens? Do we have the tendency to lose our joy or the joy to leave us, especially in times of discouragement? I had a moment of joy this week, and I don't know what you want to make out of this story I'm about to share with you, but however this applies to your life, so let it be. But I misplaced my set of keys this last Monday or uh, lost them, however you want to say it. And I mean, I search every place in the house, outside the house, in the garage, in the shed, everywhere, no keys to be found. I mean, I went over some of those places two times and three times. Wednesday night, I had a dream that my keys were sitting in the kitchen sink. Now, that doesn't make any sense at first, because if it were sitting in the kitchen sink, then Sabita would have seen it, doing all the dishes and all that. I would have seen it at times when I did maybe a couple of dishes. Um, and uh, so, I deduct from that. Oh, I ask the question, why, why are my keys in the kitchen sink? And someone said, because it had sand and dirt in it, or on them. And I deduct from that, that my keys are sitting somewhere in the sand and in the dirt, somewhere in the yard. On Monday, I remember, I, uh, I did some trimming, and I, I tucked my keys in my pants, and I tucked the truck key inside, and the rest of the keys were hanging down because it's tight enough that it could probably stay there, but they fell off a time or two before. And uh, so I figure out from that that my keys are sitting in the yard somewhere in the dirt and in the sand. So Thursday morning, okay, Sabita and I decided that we are going to go outside and start looking for my keys. In the meantime, I was using my spare key for the truck. So it's everywhere in front of the yard, no key. I went into the backyard where there is the shed, the AC unit and all of that. And I was looking there and lo and behold, my bunch of keys was sitting in the sand, in the dirt. And I said, thank you, Jesus. And there was joy that I find it because my truck key was there, the church key was there. Uh, house key was there, shed key, trailer key, I mean all the keys that you could think about. And I just said, thank you, Lord, for helping me to find. I have misplaced my keys, by the way, but not for three days. <laughs> I found them before that time. Um, but during this time of the year, uh, decorations, you walk into the store, uh, decorations, um, uh, songs coming through, the air is filled with joy music and everything else and uh, but uh, have we really thought about it or taken a close look to find out what joy really means um, is it happiness or is it just more than that something deeper and um, have you ever been so happy or truly happy to the point where you're face hurts when you laugh <laughs> that has happened to me a couple of times meeting with friends and and talking about old days in college and all of that have you ever been happy to the point where your stomach hurts from laughing 
uh, being of good friends, or to the point where the tears run down your face. Maybe, maybe you got a new job, maybe you had a promotion, a raise in salary, and there is joy that fills your heart, and you talk about it, you tell friends about it. Or maybe you earn an award, employee of the month, let's say for example, and you couldn't wait because you want to share that joy with someone else. Or maybe uh, joy for the parents. Uh, your child was not doing too well in school, whatever was happening with grades and peer pressure and everything else, and, and that saddened the hearts of the parents. And then all of a sudden, you start getting good reports. Grades are up, social interaction improve and all of that. And joy fill your heart as a father and as a mother. But there is one joy we tend to keep a secret. And that is the joy of knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our personal Savior. My prayer and trust is that we would want to share that joy like with any other joy. With people, with friends. The Apostle John says, My greatest joy is to know that people are coming to Christ as Lord and as Savior. Not the football game, your favorite team won, or your basketball game, or whatever the case may be, but your greatest joy is that to know that you have led someone to Jesus Christ or people are coming to Christ. I would like to share this, uh, this scripture with you in Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 39 to 56. It's kind of dark up here. It's, <laughs> get some, it's hard. I could hold my Bible in my hand. Uh, um, but if you have your Bibles and you would like to, to follow on, I would like to share this, this scripture with you in Luke chapter... 1 verse 39 uh, to 56. And, uh, and there are other passages I would like to include in this as well. But this is the background story. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town. Hey, great, 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 great. Oh, no, I can see even with my glasses on. <laughs> um, in the country of Judea, where where he entered, where he entered Zechariah's home, greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. As soon as the sound of her greeting reached my ear, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generation will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me in this holy name. His mercy extend to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble he has filled the hungry with good things, but has uh, sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. To Abraham, his descendants forever, even as he said that to our fathers. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Before we look into uh, this passage of scripture, I would like to share with you uh, briefly from the book of James, um, a few thoughts here before we do that. 
And this is in James uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 2 to 4. This is what James is encouraging us to do. And sometimes it's hard to understand all of this. Consider it pure joy when, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance, and perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now, how many people are going to say that I will consider it pure joy when I face difficulties in life? Not many people would probably understand that. But James is encouraging us that I want you to have joy. And there is a reason for this. Because when trials and testing comes, it reveals exactly who we are in Christ, our relationship with Him. It produces perseverance, His Word says, that we are not going to stop, but we will continue to persevere, to go on, to higher things, even to be closer drawn to God through the trial and the testing. It makes us mature. And so when we, we welcome trials, not as in all negative, but that even in the trial, it will make us mature and even complete in Jesus Christ. Now, how about if I say something like, thank you for the trial. And we say, why should we thank God or thank someone for trial? Because the trial helps us to see an area in our lives where we need to take a look at. Had it not been for the trial, had it not been for what was pointed out to us, we would not know that there is there need to be some attention to that area. So in that sense, we count it all joy for the trials. But first of all, let's look at the, uh, what happened uh, with joy uh, in the hearts and lives of some of these characters. Joy was no secret to Zechariah and Elizabeth. And the scripture says, both of them were upright in the sight of God. And we find this in Luke 1, 6 and 7. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's command regulations blamelessly. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well along in years. Now here again, okay, we have, a, we have a lady, we have a woman, okay, Elizabeth, unable to have a child. The scripture says that, that she was barren. And folks, from the little lot I know of is that no woman would like to hear from a gynecologist or whoever the case may be that she cannot have a child. Tell her anything else. Maybe she failed the test, she didn't get the promotion, uh, whatever it is, and with time she can handle all of that. But to tell her that she cannot have a child, even, even a father or, or someone who wants to be a father and have a family, to tell him that he cannot father a child, that that can be um, uh, very, very painful as well. But Elizabeth was unable to have a child. But we are going to see where God is going to take that situation and change it all together because there is nothing impossible for God to do. God blessed Elizabeth and Zechariah with a son. After the Lord appeared to Zechariah, Elizabeth got pregnant. Ladies, you remember that when you first found out that you got pregnant and you can keep it a secret, you get on the phone, you call your family, you wait until, you couldn't wait until your husband get home to let him know what is happening. And there is a celebration, there is, there, is a, there is a big hug and everything else, and everyone is having a good time of, of joy together. But Elizabeth got pregnant, and for five months, she did not leave the house. 
why she hid herself, you say, and why five months? I don't believe that she hid herself to conceal her pregnancy. The best explanation seems to be that she was waiting until she, her pregnancy was, was actually sufficiently advanced that there would be no mistake that God had indeed taken away her reproach. It wasn't uncommon, and maybe some of you remember this, that when, when neighbors are fighting with each other across the street, and they call each other names and stuff like that, and not to mention all the curse words and everything else, and one of the things that they will throw in each other face, that if someone was not getting pregnant, that that would be something that they would throw at each other. It was not uncommon. And maybe, maybe Elizabeth decided that, uh, that she was going to stay indoors until she knew exactly that there was no doubt. And we know that by five months, it would be very significant and uh, unpronounced that, uh, that her tummy was getting bigger. And, uh, but she shared her joy. And how she shared her joy is that the Lord has done this for me. He has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace. And that's what she declared when she found that out. Joy was no secret to Abraham and Sarah. In Genesis chapter 21, 1 and 2. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and uh, bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. Here again, Sarah was unable to have a child, and again, uh, she was in her distress, maybe painful uh, uh, you know, experience, and she struggled with that, probably. Whenever she, she sees a family, a husband and wife, uh, walking on the street and with their child, and she remembers and probably said, why I can't get pregnant? Why I can't have a child? And then God intervened and, and uh, changed that situation as well. God bless Abraham and Sarah with Isaac. Who could have believed that Abraham would have a son at a hundred years of age and also live to raise him to adulthood? There is nothing impossible for God to do. Doing the impossible is everyday business for God. Changing things around is, is God's specialty. That's what he likes to do. But we need to trust him more and to, and to let him take it over and to see what he can do. Our big problems wouldn't be seen as impossible and big if we let God just handle it. Are you going through some difficulties in life right now that are painful, maybe depressing, maybe discouraging, and wants to take your joy away that that Jesus Christ has placed in your heart. Give it to God. Keep on praying and watch him go to work. Watch him turn the darkness into light. Watch him turn the sorrow into joy. Watch him take your depression and make it into laughter. Watch him turn your fear into trust when you put our trust in him. But Abraham's faith was tested. The very son that God gave to Abraham that he waited so long for a hundred years, he turned around and told him that I want you to sacrifice your son. Can you imagine the pain, the anguish of such a command for him to give up his son? You must give up the most precious thing or individual to you after waiting for his entire life God asked Abraham to give him up what is the most important thing to you in life today what is most precious to you that you probably say there is no way that I can 
I can give this up. There's no way I can get rid of that. But maybe God sees in the future. And God sees that probably if you give it up because I ask you to, that there is something greater and better in life for you down the road, which we don't see now, but God sees it, and that's why he asks us to do that. And so God may be asking you to do something uh, for him, maybe something that it might be painful and very dear to us, but he can see in, in the future. It is often said that parents should not outlive their children normally referring to the pain that parents go through when a child passes. How much more painful it must be when you are the cause of that child's death. Even Isaac was obedient to this task. He was willing to go and die in obedience to God. A great weight had been lifted up and joy replaced both of them, father and son. Because you remember the rest of the story that God provided a ram that was trapped in the briar. And instead, that was going to be the sacrifice. God stepped in. God showed up and things changed. Joy was no secret to Mary and Elizabeth. In Luke chapter 1, verse 34 through 36, How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. Mary visited by an angel and the angel as the scripture says told her exactly what's going to happen she had a legitimate question how can this be at least she knew sufficient enough to know that it will take a man and a woman to be intimate to have a child or for someone to be pregnant but the angel explained that to you have you ever been visited by an angel? What would you do if a, an angel appeared to you? Let's say that you're in front of the washing machine and you're loading up clothes in the washer and there is this figure dressed in white and maybe said, before you leave, you need to change it from a, 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 a small load to a medium load. You forgot to do that. Or maybe you're in the kitchen doing dishes and, uh, and there is this figure that, that came up and, and, uh, and says to you that you missed a spot on that last plate that you put in uh, that you thought was clean. Or probably you enter your vehicle and before you turn on the ignition there on the dashboard a figure appeared or something appeared to you and said something like, don't drive faster than your angel can fly. But you know something? Our angel may not be draped in white. Our angel may come in a form just like I'm looking at you this morning and you're looking at me. I want to share a scripture with you. And, uh, and, in, this, uh, and in this scripture, it says that uh, be aware don't forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Have you ever heard someone said, or you said to somebody, you are my angel? For whatever special something happened, you are my angel. Mary showed her joy. Mary was so excited about the news that she immediately went to Elizabeth. Mary arrived at Elizabeth's house and John, still within the womb of Elizabeth, leaps for joy. Now many of us have shared the experience of feeling um, a baby's 
kick or a, a movement within the tummy. And as mom, you have always, uh, you remember, you call someone, come, come quickly, come, put your hand here, and, and sure enough, what an amazing experience, as even if when you get closer and you can see the movement of, of mommy's tummy. And, uh, but you know, the scripture says that that the baby leaped when, when John the Baptist, not in the mother's womb, when he heard that the, the baby leaped, and this was not just a, a something a, a small, and maybe it was very unusual or, or greater I mean, effect than anything before. And, uh, and Elizabeth says, oh, take it easy, John. We still have some time left. It's not time for you to be out yet. But even, even a baby, even an infant in the mother's womb can tell of the joy because Jesus Christ was going to come into this world. Mary was carrying uh, Jesus Christ. And as we close this morning, Our joy should never be kept a secret. The joy that we have. In John 4, 28, speaking of the woman at the well, then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the tongue and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Be grateful for the joy that you have. And that joy is that one day you said yes to Jesus and you open your heart and you allow him to come in and you experience the joy of sins forgiven. You experience a new life. You experience that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. And that is your experience that you have. Life has taken on new meaning and direction. How can we not share that joy? So share that joy. The woman at the well, she left and she went into the town. And she was telling everyone, come see a man who told me everything. It was the joy in her heart that drove her to go and tell. It was the difference in her heart that she experienced that she wanted to go and share with someone else. Let's share that joy that Jesus Christ has placed in our heart. I'll ask the worship team if they would come up. God has given us that joy. One of Billy Graham's favorite saying was don't keep the faith. Share it. Don't keep the joy. Share it. My prayer and trust is for all of us today is that our joy will be increased this season. Our cups will be filled and running over with joy. And when it runs over, that it will run over into the hearts and lives of people that we know, our friends, our family, our neighbors, people who do not know Christ as the Lord and personal Savior. Heavenly Father, Thank you for the opportunity that we have today of sharing your joy to others. May this be a joyous season, not only for us, but for the hearts and lives that we will be touched. We thank you and we praise you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen.
protect them, cover them with your love. Lord, I pray that your, your mercy would shine forth through them, that they would be a witness to others in, those, in this world, in our community, in our lives. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength.